Hello the internet and welcome back to Tony259, Tony359's second channel. On one of my last videos on my main channel I showed you how to fix or how not to fix an Onkyo receiver with the no sound issue. And it's an interesting video, please go and take a look, I think it's quite interesting, quite a lot of explanation and things happening including some BGA re-bowling and in the end, a little spoiler alert, the receiver came back to life, so uh, it's been working since, so happy days. Now to quickly recap the issue is that most Onky receivers from I think it's about 2010 they tend to die prematurely and the reason is a small IC on the HDMI board it's the main DSP for the whole unit that was manufactured by Texas Instruments and Revision B in particular were deemed as defective by the manufacturer itself, by Texas Instruments. That was replaced with Revision D, so Onkyo extended the warranty for quite a few years, replacing those boards, sometimes with the same revision of the IC, unfortunately, sometimes with the new one. Now the video I published on the main channel had a revision A and eventually I understood that A revision was not too bad and hopefully, finger crossed, I fixed that receiver for good. Uh, this one unfortunately came to me a few years ago with uh, no sound and it happens to have the B revision of that DSP. So in today's video we are gonna fix this receiver as well. So let me thank today's sponsors PCBWay. Let's not waste any more time, let's start working on this Onkyo receiver. Now, I've got this Onkyo a few years ago, I purchased as non-working just for the fun of fixing it and uh, shortly afterwards I got it I realized that the issue was this little IC here is the usual fault where you don't have any audio coming out of it. I warmed it up a little bit, probably with just a hairdryer or nothing serious and it came back to life, so I knew that the issue was the usual DSP problem. Now back then I didn't know about the different revisions for different ICs and I still thought that hopefully I could just reflow or reboil the IC and it would come back to life. Which is exactly what I did, I reflowed the IC, it came back to life and it seemed to be working totally fine. I kept this receiver working here in my workshop for a while but I think about a couple of weeks later or something like that I moved it from my bench to the floor and it died there, it wouldn't turn on anymore, it does turn on uh, but there's no sound coming out, you see no sound pictogram, the speaker pictograms at the front of the display, there's no click that should enable all the final outputs and that told me that DIC again was responsible for that. So I went ahead and re-bowled DIC. This is my very first successful re-bowling because I re this and I put it back and it worked. So that was already a victory for me because that was the very first time and I didn't have all the fancy tools I have now. And I thought, right, this time I'm going to test it thoroughly. So I kept it running for I think two or three months, it was mostly on here in my workbench and I was turning it on and off regularly, I was shaking it, moving it around on the floor, making sure that this was working and it was working totally fine. So after again two, three months I thought right, this is fixed for good, I can find a new home for it. So I went on eBay and I sold it to someone. The receiver got to the buyer and the buyer sent me a message, hey this worked for half an hour and then it stopped working. <laughs> It didn't take too much to realize that the DSP failed again, so unfortunately I have to refund the buyer, of course, no question asked, and I had to pay for shipping the unit back. So in the end, um, uh, to be honest, this is kind of not worth fixing, it's nothing super special. It's a TXNR609, by the way, I forgot to mention it, it's nothing su super special, though it does support Dolby Through HD and DTS MA, so the latest lossless uh, codex. It doesn't support Dolby Atmos, but this could be used with a uh, Blu-ray and just enjoy all the uh, latest recent uh, high quality codecs. So after the unit was returned to me, I realized that I had to replace the IC. At the time, I didn't know there was a B version, a D version. I went on AliExpress and I bought exactly the same, not knowing that the B versions are no good. But the thing is, if you get like a brand new one, which probably don't even exist, it might work for another, say, 15,000 hours. Anyway, I got the IC. Unfortunately, I waited quite a few months after it was delivered. I installed it and it still didn't work. I don't know entirely, sh I'm not entirely sure why has the NAND memory gone bad? Has the, was the IC fake? Was it uh, re-labeled, re-whatever? Uh, the bottom line is 
I spent another 30 pounds on that AC, so we go 30 pounds for the receiver, 30 pounds for the AC, shipping it back and forth to the customer. So honestly, the best outcome for this receiver would be to throw it away. <laughs> But I hate throwing things away, especially if everything is working and you have one tiny little component which is preventing the whole thing from working. So this has lived under a bench for years. I can't remember. Uh, it's been there for quite some time. And just the other day on eBay, I got a notification that someone was selling this board, the HDMI board, with the latest revision of the DSP on it, revision D. It was 40 pounds, but I went ahead and purchased it. So hopefully I can revive this receiver today. Now I went ahead and purchased the whole board. I'm not going ahead today and swap the ICs between boards. It doesn't make sense. If I'm not mistaken, it should be an identical board. It might be a different revision, but it's gonna be identical. So it's gonna be plug and play. Now, someone suggested that I should really remove that new IC from the replacement board and use it on a higher end uh, receiver. My own 5508 I have in my own home theater, which is a preamplifier, is not an amplifier, has a B version of the IC. It's on borrowed time. It will fail at some point. But honestly, BGA is not my thing. And I feel it, there is a good chance that I can probably break everything, my receiver and or the replacement IC that I purchased, the replacement board I see coming from the board that I purchased. So I, I don't know. I don't think I don't think I want to do that. And uh, I'm, today I'm just going to revive this one. So this is the parcel I've got today from Royal May here, here in the UK. Let's open it up and let's make sure that the board is the same. Let's take a look at that IC. And you can find some related free projects which require a PCB online. And when you require a PCB, well, PCBWay is definitely your stop. If you follow my channels, you know I've been using PCBWay for all my projects for quite some time, and I can only recommend them. The quality of the PCBs is excellent, and the customer service is top-notch. Once you've found your project online, all you need to do is to find the Gerber file. That can be uploaded on PCBWay.com. The process is more or less automatic. I tend to change the color of the PCBs, as you can see here. And then you just need to select a postal service and the PCBs will be delivered at your place. And it's not just PCBs. 3D printing, metal sheet fabrication and CNC machining are some of the services that PCBWay can offer. So take a look at PCBWay.com, the link is also down below in the description. There's also an interesting electronic contest uh, running right now, whether you want to take a look or, my, or maybe you want to participate. But anyways, let me thank PCBWay for sponsoring my videos on my channels. Their help makes these videos possible. Now let's continue with this Onkyo. Here we got the two boards side by side. They are absolutely the same model. It says here BCHDM-0604. And I don't know if you can see it. Yes, it's the same model here. And here are these two ICs. The replacement one has a new sticker on it. There's a U written with some uh, Sharpie, something like that. And if you look at the code, it actually says it's the revised code with the D letter in it. While if you're looking at this one, it says B. So fantastic, this is exactly what I'm looking for. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm going to wire my laptop to the serial output of this system, because as I mentioned in my video, this is an ARM processor running Linux, and uh, we can access the serial console out of it. When it turns on, you can see what happens. So I'm curious to see what happens to this one, if it does anything whatsoever. I'm curious to see whether it throws up an error message, for example, or whether it's like doing nothing completely, because this is the replacement one I got from AliExpress ages ago. And regardless of that, we're gonna install this board and then we're gonna see what this is doing on the same serial output. I've got this 3.3 volt serial adapter. It's the same I'm using for my PlayStation 3 and 4 to access the Syscon. And it's connected to the P1302A connector. It says for writing ARM processor. That's the serial console for the ARM processor. We got PuTTY on screen. So hopefully when we turn it on, we might see something or we might not. Because again, this is not working. So I'm not really expecting this to work. The other one, yes. <laughs> but this one could be completely dead. And if the CPU is not so properly or the uh, firmware is not loading at all we might get a glimpse or we might get absolutely nothing we'll discover in a second let's give main to the 609 go mains and let's turn it on three two one go nothing. 
we get absolutely nothing and there is no final click which would happen when the ARM processor is up and running and it tells the main CPU, hey, I'm up and running, you can uh, open the outputs. So unless I'm doing something wrong with the serial here, this is telling me that, I don't know, maybe the CPU was fake or maybe I made a mistake when I soldered it uh, or maybe I even make a mistake here with the serial. Maybe we can confirm with the other one later on. But as it stands right now, this is completely dead. There's no activity whatsoever. So the next step, is to swap the board and see what happens with the other board. I, I don't know, I think some alien is trying to talk to me through the receiver here. Look at that. <laughs> I just switched on mains. This, this is in standby. Oh wow, this is cool. Now Onky receivers and not just Onky receivers come with this hideous power connector. And all you need to do, you need to push the connector and the wire comes out. I need like three hands eventually the wire comes out it's it's the cheapest possible horrible solution and the owner of these hdmi board uh, didn't know slash didn't realize it so i think they pulled until the plastic bit came off now this is not damage to the point where it's non-recoverable, but I will have to remove the plastic from my other hdmi board and replace it up here and hopefully that um, should make the trick HDMI board is in. Well, first things first, without fiddling with serial or anything, will it work? Because I don't know, I purchased it as working, so it should work. Let's give uh, power to the receiver now. And let's turn it on and let's wait for that extra click at the end. In three, two, one, go. Yes, extra click, and I believe we have the pictogram of the speakers on the front panel. And we do, so this is working. Perfect. Now, let's see if I can access the serial port of uh, this uh, ARM processor. All right, I'm wired as previously, and I've got Putty running on screen. Let's give power to the unit now. Perfect, and let's turn it on. Three, two, one, go. Okay, oh no, yes, there you go. Yes, definitely something happening there. That's it. So clearly, because I've wired exactly as I was before, clearly the other board is not working 100%. So this seems to be working. Well, I might try and play some sound out of it, but it should work. Now, my only question is, do I need to run a firmware update? Because uh, I'm assuming that this board has some firmware. Is it uh, being applied when the firmware is uh, uh, applied to the machine or is it coming from somewhere else? So it doesn't matter. I do not know. I would say probably to be on the safe side, it would be a good idea just to re-update the whole machine so I know it's uh, fully done and dusted. I gave a little bit of explanation on my main channel video on what happens in here, but basically this is an ARM processor running Linux. And as you can see, we've got 64 megabyte of RAM and I believe the NAND, which is where the, the firmware is stored, it's a 32, is that a megabyte, megabit, I don't know, 3.3 volts, 8 bit. And what happens here is just uh, started Linux. And uh, only when this processor is fully up and running, will it send the control command to the main CPU to say, yes, I'm good, you can open the outputs. From the logs, I can see that this is running Linux 2.6.33-RC4. And down below it says Monta Vista Linux Professional Edition 5.0. Well, everything seems to be working and I went to re-upgrade the firmware just to be on the safe side. And when, when I was about to push the button and upgrade, I realized that the version on this receiver is actually newer than the latest released by Onkyo. 
had a look online and it turns out that other people were reporting the same thing when the HDMI board was replaced for a new one when it failed and uh, Onkyo replaced it under warranty. So I'm assuming that maybe there is a specific firmware that maybe works with that IC, the Revision D, or what, for whatever reason. Well, I don't feel like downgrading though. Someone said I downgraded anyways and my network started working better. I don't know, but I don't feel like doing it, especially because the version of firmware which my receiver, this receiver, is sports is not available online so if something goes wrong well I can't get the uh, this new version I have on this receiver I have to assume Onkyo knew what they were doing when they released this new version so that's it all I need to do is to finalize put all the screws check all the channels and hopefully I can find a new home for this receiver and also get rid of it because <laughs> it's been sitting there for absolutely forever so I'd be very very happy to see it going now, before this goes, I will make sure to transfer all these heat sinks on these ICs here, and I will get another one, which I might have somewhere for the ARM processor, because that's the one that gets pretty toasty. Now, hopefully the D revision is not really sensitive anymore to heat and age, but you never know, and I think it's just a good idea to have a heat sink on it. So nothing too special today, but I'm really, really happy to see this receiver working. I hope you enjoyed this little board swapping. And if you want to see a bit more on an Onkyo repair, just go on the main channel and check the uh, Onkyo 3007 repair video, which is a bit more interesting, challenging, and maybe a bit more rewarding at the end when everything started working. Sorry for the spoiler. <laughs> If you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate the thumb up down below and also consider subscribe to this channel and my main channel if you like this kind of things. Don't forget I'm on Patreon, the link is also down below in the description and there is a free tier, so no excuses, but if you don't want to join Patreon, which I very much understand, well, maybe you can buy me a coffee and the link is also down below in the description. If you don't want to buy me a coffee, which is also very understandable, well, I hope you enjoy the video and I appreciate your time here. So that's it for today, thank you for watching, I hope to see you soon here on my channels for my next videos. Thank you very much and goodbye. Bye-bye.